Hey, what's up guys? So we're back again with another video. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about my preclinical experience. If you guys are new to the channel, my name's Alfie, and I'm about to start my fourth year of medical school in London at UCL. I wanted to put together a video about my preclinical experience and what I've learned over this time. The reason that I'm making this video is because I remember when I was starting medical school, I was pretty anxious and nervous because I wasn't really sure what to expect. So I wanted to make this video for anyone coming into medicine or is about to start their next year in medical school. This is definitely going to be a long video, but I hope you guys find this interesting and I hope you guys find this useful. So without further ado, let's kick off with my first year experience. After a long 12 hour journey flying from Hong Kong, I finally settled into my first accommodation in London called Garden Halls. I remember getting off the cab with my mom and saying, did, did we get dropped off at the wrong place? Because the place genuinely looked like a five star hotel instead of looking like a student hall. So after settling into my accommodation, I basically jumped straight into Freshers Week. And the Medical Society did an incredible job putting together events such as a boat ball, a karaoke and bowling night, and other fun events to help everyone in the course bond together. So something which you might have heard of if you've heard of Freshers Week is also Freshers Flu. And I've got to say from first-hand experience, it's definitely a real thing and it definitely sucks. I don't even know how it spread so fast, but I swear by the end of week two, every 30 seconds there'd be someone in the lecture hall coughing. <coughs> And on the first night that I landed, I actually went out with some of the people in halls who just moved in as well. And we went for a night out, but I remember the next morning, I woke up and my voice was completely gone. And I just remember thinking, oh my god. I'm about to meet a lot of new people who I'm probably going to see on my course for the next six years. And they're going to think I'm a complete weirdo because I can't even talk. No! So in terms of the academics, in first year, the content is broken down into four main modules. The first is an introductory model called Foundations of Health and Medical Practice, which essentially introduces us to the world of medicine. The second was based on immunology. The third was about heart and lungs. And the last one was called Fluids and Metabolism. So on any given day, my days would typically start at 10 and I'd have anywhere from two to five lectures, followed by maybe some workshops or tutorials or labs. And in terms of how much work we had to do, I'd say that the university did a pretty good job at easing us into the workload associated with medical school. So something which is quite unique at UCL is the way that we're taught anatomy. But typically, most medical schools will rely on pre-dissected specimens, which are typically in boxes. It usually means that you can't see that much, and it usually means that you can't touch a specimen. But at UCL, we were really fortunate to learn anatomy with our own cadavers. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know what a cadaver is, let me just read this off Google. A cadaver is a corpse. Okay, well that's not very useful. A cadaver is a dead human body that is used by medical students, physicians, and other scientists to study anatomy, identify disease sites, and determine cause of death. So yeah. With most of the science being covered in lectures, you might be thinking, when did we learn any clinical skills? And so there was actually this module called CPP, which stands for Clinical Professional Practice. So we were assigned in groups to a hospital where we would have to go for an entire morning, once a week, uh, and we would discuss things such as how to interact with patients, medical ethics, and different clinical examinations on different parts of the body. So for me, this took place at one of the main hospitals of UCL called the Whittington Hospital, which I found a really good place to learn at. The end of the academic year were the dreaded first year exams. Think about it like this. We're meant to absorb the truckload of content that the medical school gives us, synthesize it, and try and understand it to the point where we can pick out the best solution for a scenario that they give to us. So for example, they might describe a patient with a certain condition and describe five different drugs. So drug A, drug B, drug C, drug D, and drug E. And it turns out that drug B and C are both good options to give to the patient. However, because drug B has one less side effect, that makes it the best option. And it's, you know, and it's up to you to see if you can find it within your knowledge, if you can find that out and pick that out. Overall, first year was definitely the most fun of the first three years of medical school. And I'd say that in terms of, you know, going out and meeting new friends who are basically stuck with me for the next six years. Moving on to second year. So second year was largely similar to first year, but with all the content being stepped up to a faster and more intense rate. And that meant that we had to spend a lot more time in lectures. So if I remember, I think on most days, we were basically in school from nine to five. 
So it felt like a working job. So the topics that we covered over four main modules for second year were movement and musculoskeletal biology. And the second was neuroscience and behavior. And then the third was called endocrine systems and reproduction. And the fourth was called uh, genetics, development, and cancer. So for clinical skills, we had CPP again this year, but we were in a different hospital this time. So I was placed at the Royal Free Hospital, which was also a great place to learn. So besides learning more clinical examinations on places like the leg, the ear, the eye, we also got to meet patients with certain ailments. There was a really immersive workshop where we got to meet a patient with a type of blindness, which essentially meant that they could only see through a slit. And so to kind of uh, experience what they feel on a day-to-day -day basis, they gave us these glasses, um, which mimic their disorder. And they got us to do a few set of tasks. So when it came to the exams at the end of second year, on top of all the sections that we had before, we also now had a practical clinical component called OCOPI, which the rest of the world might know as OSCEs. And, the, and this exam was basically broken down into different stations, which assess our knowledge of medical science, medical ethics, pharmacology, and clinical examinations. So this was definitely a really difficult exam to prepare for, but by studying in groups, it thankfully wasn't so bad in the end. To be completely honest, compared to my first year, my second year experience was definitely a lot more of a struggle. The content was stepped up and at times it felt like too much to handle. And in other aspects as well, besides academics, I just didn't feel like things were working out. And so when things start to feel like they're not in your control, that's when you start to lose motivation and you start to lose purpose. But if anything, I'm still really thankful for the experience because it made me reflect on myself and look at all the support I had around me with friends and family and it made me reflect on myself to want to be not just a better medical student, but also a better person. So moving on to my third year. In the UK, they offered this option called an IBSC, which stands for an Integrated Bachelor of Science, which essentially is a year for you to pick a subject that you like, such as neuroscience, immunology, or global health, and really focus in on the area and pursue a research project in that certain field. I picked my IBSC in cardiovascular sciences for two reasons. The first is I'm really interested in the heart, and the second is in the future, one day I want to be a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon. Compared to the past two years of preclinical medicine, my third year was definitely a far more relaxed experience. So in my first term, I focused on the main module, which was called heart and circulation, which essentially looked at the physiology of the heart and and the way that we're treating cardiovascular disease in hospitals right now. And the second module was called congenital heart disease because we got to see different hearts with different types of defects, you know, from all different types of ages. So I saw hearts which were this big and I saw hearts that were even this big. So it was definitely an eye-opening experience. My second term was focused a lot more on my research project where I was building a physical model of a surgically corrected heart with 3D printing, which sounds pretty complex, but I'll definitely go into this in my next video where I'm gonna explain my whole dissertation project. So to wrap things up, I'd say that in terms of academics, my preclinical experience was a pretty intense one and it definitely gave me a broad sense of what the world of medicine is like. And I think the general consensus amongst my year is that we're all itching to use the knowledge that we have and the clinical skills that we picked up and really use them hands-on. So I definitely would say through all these stressful and difficult times throughout the three years, I've definitely learned a lot and I've definitely grown in terms of my maturity, my patience, and my approach to dealing with difficult situations. I think all these skills would be really useful when I finally get to start clinics. But that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys found it useful. Stay tuned because I'm definitely going to be filming a lot more of my clinical experience. But until then, catch you guys later. Thank you.